I'd like to bid you welcome. Bid you, I'll repeat that. I would like to bid you welcome. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank you very much for being at home. I have the most ridiculous dish that you would ever imagine in your life being done. It is a dish which nobody in their right mind would ever do on television. In fact, would never in their right mind do at home. I don't expect you to do it, except if you're grabbed by the whole thing and think to yourself, gosh, that's almost indecent. I think I'll have a go. I'll tell you where it comes from. This place comes from the central part of Italy. In fact, it comes from Firenze, which is a rather social status word for Florence. So I'll take you to Florence now, and that's where we're going to today, to have a look at what I think is one of the most beautiful cities in the entire world. The Hotel Gran Baglione. That's where we stayed, and we looked down in this beautiful sunny square. And it was in the middle of winter, but you see, they don't have snow in Florence. And we went into the Ristorante Sabatini, which is rated as being one of the finest restaurants in the world. And certainly, I think it was the finest that we actually visited in Italy. And right here is their chef de cuisine who's cutting the famous Tuscany beef. Now, I think that beef is the most beautiful beef I've ever tasted in my life. And I'm a Scot, and I should, well, Aberdeen Angus beef, let's face it, is really tremendous. But this piece of beef is so expensive that they weigh it when they cut it, and you pay so much an ounce for that meat. Look at that great T-bone there, that enormous hunk of beautiful succulent flesh being grilled so it's crusty on the outside. Oh, and you notice how he's turning it with a fork. And you might have noticed that home economists say that you should never turn a piece of meat with a fork. That's home economists, you see. This man is a great professional. A lovely piece of beef, that is, with that lovely clover feeling. Now, here is the restaurant, and we sat in the restaurant, Trina and I, and an extraordinary lady who wouldn't speak. And there is the dish I'm going to make for you today. No, no, not that. I'd never make her. Um, the, the, the Gatto Saint Honore. That's my wife, Trina. There it is again, all dusted over the top. And Eureka, here is Florence all dusted over the top too. For the first time in 138 years, snow fell and laid in Florence. You are seeing a piece of film now, I swear to you, you will never ever see again in the whole of your lives. That beautiful city with a foot of snow right over the top of it. And it is an absolute scoop, because if it hasn't happened for 138 years, I'm sure it won't happen for a few more years. Where I'm standing at the moment, incidentally, is on top in the roof garden of the Hotel Baglioni. In the summer, they serve you beautiful food under the stars, and people play that lovely guitar for you and wander around the tables. And it is the most romantic thing that you can imagine in your life. If you want to do something at night time with a foot of snow out there, that's your responsibility. I can assure you it's not that great. Uh, one thing that happened in the Ristorante Sabatini to us, to Trina and I, was they brought along, this is, by the way, a fiasco. I'm not making any detrimental comment about the wine. That is what that bottle is called, is a fiasco. Now, they bought a fiasco, a bottle about that size to us, and it has a swinging cradle because it's too heavy to lift. And they pulled the cork out before I could stop the man because we were very short of money. So I looked at Trina and I said, what on earth are we going to do? Because I'm Scottish, you see. And uh, she said, well, I'm afraid we're going to have to drink it. <laughs> now, when the rub really comes is what happens, of course, when you find out how much that wine is. That wine is $1.85 for that enormous bottle of brilliant wine. Now, I tell you, that's worth paying for. Come through and I'll show you how the dish is done. So, first of all, I've got some water on the boil there, and there's 10 fluid ounces of water there. And over here, I have a, one of these candy thermometer things. You might like to have a look at that just to see what it looks like. This is a sugar thermometer, and have you got one of these, by the way? Yes. Oh, you have. Oh, isn't that nice? Good. We want to get to crack. No, we don't. Small crack, uh, which is just a little bit above hard ball, if you're interested. <laughs> now, you just take this clip, and you clip that onto the edge of the pot, which is a bit tricky. <laughs> I do recommend a, a rather more expensive type than that, but I'm a bit inexpensive myself. 
it's better than the word cheap. And you just place that in there, and in there there's four fluid ounces of crystal clear bore water. And um, <laughs> it's very suitable for me. And then you just take eight ounces of fruit sugar, and you pour that in all of that. Now look at it. It looks like something you're going to strike in mid-Atlantic. You just shake the pot, and the whole thing eventually goes to a most charming toffee. Now, you just then take a dessert spoonful, which is really rather difficult, um, of this stuff, which is liquid glucose. Now, if you want that, you get liquid glucose. You just have to pop it down there. There's no point in, in scraping your finger off it and doing all sorts of unhygienic things to the poor <laughs> wretched spoon. You've just got to leave it in there until it all melts off. You can get this by going to a candy shop in North America. You can get it by going to a sweet shop in England and to a chemist shop, by the way. You can get it in drug stores in Australia. And I don't know where you can get it, chaps, in Singapore and Hong Kong and Manila. But you know, if you look around a bit, I'm sure you'll find it. All right, so there is 10 fluid ounces of water. Well, at least it was 10 fluid ounces of water. It seems to boil down a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Uh, here, you, you add to that two ounces of butter, natural, beautiful dairy butter that everybody seems to be scared of nowadays. Fancy being scared of a cow. <laughs> I mean, it is ridiculous the things we get scared of nowadays, isn't it? Really. Uh, so you just put the butter into that hot water and you just raise the temperature a little bit until the, the, the little... I love this. You don't get it, by the way, in, a, in, a, in a, dressing myself to Australia uh, at the moment and England. You don't... Uh, when it says... When you mean uh, this thing... Uh, hey, come here, have a look at this. When, when you've got this, this thing here, this dial, and it says M high and M low and low and things, in England and Australia, of course, it says, it says H-I-G-H. But this is a friendly range. It says, hi, like that, <laughs> add to it. Hi. Every time I turn it on, I want to go, hi, back again. You know.